Hello and welcome to part one in a series of tutorials where I will be showing you how to create a line chart racer using data that comes from Excel. So before we start, let me show you what I hope for us to achieve by the end of this series. And this will also help to explain to you what a line chart racer is. So this is what it is. It is an updating line chart where the point, more points get added as time goes by. So this is what we hope to achieve by the end of this series. So if we follow the black line, notice that the Y axis is updating. If we just keep following for a bit more. There we go, see it updates. We also have a fixed X axis with label. The Y axis also has a label. We have a title and we have a legend, which shows you the color of the line and what each line represents. In this case, it's regions. We also have a toolbar at the bottom, but that doesn't really come in handy at all in this case. We won't be using it for this tutorial. So that is our final goal. And so let's start with part one, and that is getting our data, our Excel data, and putting it into our Python environment. So I'm using Visual, uh, Visual Studio Code, and when you create a new project, you also create a new folder. So what I've done is I have created a new project and let me just hash that. And what I've done is when you create a new project, you create a new folder. So this is the folder that I created. It's called line chart rate tutorial and we're doing part one here. So this is part one. And notice here we've got our Excel file here ready. So if I just show you the layout of the Excel file so that it can be read in the right way, this is what we have. This is the population statistics we have which come from, I believe, the UN website or the World Health Organization website. So we have our year and our um, columns here from B to H representing each different line. And notice they have headings. And notice the data that needs to be updated goes down in rows. So when this line chart gets updated, it goes down each row. Okay, so once you're happy with that, we can save it as an XLSX file and remember to save it in the folder you have to, that you use to create your Visual Studio code. Okay, once you've saved it in that folder, you can exit. We can also exit this. And we're ready to import our Excel file into our Python environment. So the first thing we need to do is import our pandas module because that's the module that will be used to manipulate the Excel. And I've given it an alias of PD. So wherever we reference PD, we're calling the pandas module. So the next thing we need to do is import our Excel data. So I've created a variable Excel underscore file and that equals the name of our Excel file that we created and saved in the folder along with the extension. So I've called it population line chart racer dot XLSX and I've put that in quotation marks. The next thing we need to do is import, is to read our Excel file. So we just created the variable with the file name and extension. Now we actually need to get it into our Python shell. And I've done that by typing in pd.readExcel. So readExcel is a function, read underscore Excel. And then in brackets, I've specified the variable Excel underscore file and I've typed in sheet name equals zero. So that's the first sheet name in our Excel file. And it just so happens it's also the data that we need to create this line chart racer. So that's very helpful. The next thing here, it's a little bit pointless, but I, I, I put, put it in there. there. It's, it's I've, I've just basically, basically Excel D equals, equals Excel, Excel data, data. Because I've, I've equated this imported, imported Excel file as Excel data. data. And, and I, could I could just change, change that, that to be Excel, Excel D. D. Let's, let's just do that. Updating, updating as we go along. Okay, so the next thing we can do is we can check to see if we've actually got the correct data in our Python shell. And we just do that with a simple print check. So if we print it, we see here in our command prompt output that we have numbers. And we also see on the output in our Visual Studio Code shell that we also have the numbers and they do seem to be the correct numbers year going down, good, good, with the heading at the top, all looking good. 
So that seems to be working all right. So the next thing we need to do is draw our graph. So if I go back up to the top and import the matplotlib module, that's a, a very useful graphing module. And if I type in from matplotlib, import pyplot as plt. So what I've done is I've imported, imported the pyplot part of matplotlib and I give an alias as plt. So plt is essentially matplotlib.pyplot. So the first thing to do is draw our figure. And I've also, at the bottom, if I type in plt.show, I can show you what each one of these lines does do as we go along. So if you type in plt.figure and then specify fig size and then equate that to figure one, we've created our canvas in order to add and modify our graph. The next thing we need to do is if we just type in plt.x label and then if we in um, brackets if we then in quotation marks specify a name for our x label and then comma we can also type in font size equals 20 we can specify the font size to be 20. So what we've done here is we've created an x label called year and we've specified a specific font that we want associated with it. And we can do the same thing for the Y label and the same thing for a title, except type in plt.title and plt.y label instead of plt.x label. So if I show you what we have so far, we see here we have our population size Y label, our title and our X label. Awesome. So let's continue. So the next thing is I specified a style called classic. The map.lib the pipot has many different styles. You can check them in the documentation. If you just type in map.lib documentation into Google, you'll see there are very various different styles which you can use. So I type in plt.style.use and then classic, that uses the classic style. Nothing changes much, it's just um, how the points are shown and how the lines are shown and how the data is shown essentially. But you won't see anything here because we're not we're not actually plotting points at the moment. The next thing we're going to do is we want to add grid lines. So notice that if I just run it again, notice that we don't have any grid lines here. So we can add grid lines and we can also specify an x-axis but we want the y-axis to update so we will be leaving that. And then the legend we'll be doing in a different tutorial in part two. So if we add grid lines, we can do that by simply typing in plt.grid and that will add grid lines. And then, so if I just show that to you, here we can add, you see we've got grid lines at each point, at each tick mark. Very nice. The next thing we can do is we can add PL, we can specify our X axis by typing in X limb. We can also do the same for Y axis by typing in Y limb. And then in brackets, you can have your start point and then comma your end point. So in this case, we'll start with our X limb will be our year. So we're starting in 1960 where the data starts and we're ending in 2060. So the actual data here ends in 2050 but I chose to end it at 2060 because I was getting a problem where the last 10 or so points was being cut for for the highest lines were being was being covered up by my legend. So I just extended the X limb, the X axis a bit. So if we run it now, you'll see we have grid lines and a specified X axis. Notice it goes in 20 years, 6 or 20 years. So we have 1960, 80, 2000, 20, 40 and 60. Awesome. Okay, so now when you build this, when you finish this, you'll notice that sometimes it may run really slowly. So there's a couple of things you can do at this stage with the matplotlib module to basically have it take up less memory, have it run a bit smoother. And one of those is turning off the interactive mode. So notice that when we when we run um, so let's get rid of this. Uh, doo -doo -doo. 
if you run it. Okay, so let's just get rid of this all together and we run it. So notice here that we have this toolbar at the bottom. And what we can do with I off is we can turn off the interactivity. So basically, we've sort of dumbed down this graph a little bit to save up space and memory so that it runs a bit smoother. Another thing we can do is we can, um, I haven't really done much here in terms of that, but we can specify the toolbar at the bottom what buttons are actually included um, by using RC params function and then specifying the toolbar, then we can sort of add or change different buttons according to your needs. So I've just typed in RC params brackets toolbar equals none. So this together, I plt.i off and plt.rc params together will hopefully make things run a bit smoother. Down the especially when we're adding the points later on. So if we run it now, this is our final product at the end of part one. So in the second part, we'll be creating our data points, specifying each one of those lines adding a legend, and then maybe next part or part after that, part three, we'll be animating the whole thing. So it all works together and then we'll be showing you the final result. So please do subscribe, please do watch this and subscribe to my channel and share it and like and yeah, keep on watching. Thank you very much.